I think this is a very good question. So let me read it. Uh, you're teaching the school system and I appreciate you hanging on and, and continuing to uh, uh, serve our children. Uh, I'm very concerned about special education services in your school system. First of all, special education teacher at your school just had a baby. And of course you understand that there's a teacher shortage at this time, but they are not filling her leave. They said they cannot find anyone to fill the leave. Your question is, is this legal? And we'll get to that. So that's question one. Also, your son has Down syndrome, mainstreamed until last year. He still has been attending some general education classes. He's in band, and although he really uh, can't play an instrument, he loves it and is welcomed by the band director and the students. Uh, several aides have left. There now is not enough manpower for one of the aides to take him to general education class. At this point, he has not been in, uh, to band in a month. Are there any steps I can take to rectify the solution? That's question number two. So let's address number one. Uh, when it comes to kids uh, or when it comes to teacher leave, okay? Now, as far as replacing and having a long-term substitute, uh, you know, especially at this point in the school year, yes, it's risky on the part of the school system to do that. But at the same time, understand that FAPE is attached to tangible measurable progress and to the IEP duration date. So if the IEP runs from, let's say, August to May, which is typical for most IEPs, then at that point, if the, if the school district is confident that they're going to be able to show tangible, measurable progress according to the child's goals, and they're progressing in their general education curriculum, depending on what class we're talking about, then at that point, <clears throat> having a long-term substitute did not deny the child a free, appropriate public education. So the devil's in the details there, you see. Um, it's all depending on whether or not the school system is going to be able to show that progress was made. It's not necessarily attached to the general education teacher or the special education teacher. Uh, and I understand licensure. I understand that they're supposed to have instruction through somebody who is licensed. It's just one of those things that in this field and when I'm arguing these cases, there is a lot of forgiveness and latitude for schools that just simply don't have enough staff, even though that's not an excuse under the law. They're given a lot of latitude by our judges, okay? that these kind of things happen and we shouldn't be unreasonable about it as parents, all right? So I understand what the rules say, but at the same time, everything, everything comes back down to whether or not you can show tangible, measurable progress for your child. That's attached to the substantive requirement for them to provide your child a free appropriate public education. So let's say the teacher's gone for two weeks. So there's a lot of parents that have called me, oh my God, James, my child's not getting their specialized instruction. The teacher's been gone for a couple of weeks. That's not the standard, guys. The standard is whether or not the school system is going to be able to show that your child progressed during those times, regardless of the hiccups. That includes speech language, that includes OT. Sometimes they miss those services. So then let's talk about the aid for your son. Now, first of all, if your son doesn't have any behaviors that would impede his learning or the, or the learning of others. And the other thing is, unless he is severely cognitively disabled, um, and I don't even believe that that's necessarily the case. Uh, I, I don't know that. I mean, I haven't seen your child's um, scores, but it is one of those things to where Down syndrome is one of those categories, or it's not a category, but it's one of those disabilities that... Um, Schools love to sort of eventually track into more of a restrictive setting. And unless a child has behaviors that really severely impede their learning or the learning of others, um, the benefit for Down syndrome and other developmental disabilities is to be immersed in a general education setting um, and have the focus of their education be less about academics and more about social emotional learning, more about communication. Uh, more about transition services, more about functional living skills. Many of these things can be pushed into general education. And the other thing is, <clears throat> unless your child absolutely requires that kind of support to participate in band, then we should be uh, utilizing um, uh, peer support. If your child doesn't have behaviors, then we should be encouraging the social emotional learning through peer support. So the peers could take him to band. All right, there's nothing that, that says that that can't happen. Uh, so there's always a solution. It's whether or not your IEP team wants to do that. And that should be something that is done. It should never be an excuse of we don't have enough aid, so therefore your child doesn't get access. Uh, that is absolutely wrong. So because lack of resources, uh, including a teacher, is not an excuse 
in the law. It just simply isn't, especially because there are alternative solutions. And of course, we want to foster independence as much as possible for our children. Um, and so at that point, unless they can point to an absolute reason why he requires aid support, we should be encouraging that independence. Um, and, and if they can't point to why a peer can't assist, peers can assist, they should assist, we should be pushing that in as well. Okay, great question. Once again, we appreciate you. Uh, we appreciate that you, you're serving our kids and serving your own. Mm -hmm.